Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode I'm happy to give you a first look at Photoshop Mix 2.0 for iOS. Now if you've been a Photoshop user or kind of looked over at Photoshop you know that it's this great desktop application that serves so many purposes for so many people. However, what the mobile team at Adobe has done is taken segments of Photoshop and converted them into mobile apps. So Photoshop Mix was one of those applications where it took a subset of what Photoshop could do on a desktop and basically built a mobile app around compositing. And so it basically allows people to take their photos, make some adjustments and corrections to them, but more what it's really geared for is compositing and layering inside your mobile device. So 2.0 takes it to the next level. It gives customers the kinds of things they've been asking for since Photoshop Mix 1.0. Let's dive in and take a look. Now, although I'm gonna be showing this to you on my iPad Air 2, it's exactly the same on iPhone. So I just decided the bigger screen was better to show on the iPad. So with that said, let's dive in. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up Photoshop Mix uh, 2.0. And of course it shows me my previous projects. I'm gonna go ahead and tap the plus sign on the left hand side. And when I tap the plus sign, of course it's saying, you can go get a new picture. You can go get a picture to start with this project. So I can get one on my iPad or using the iPad's camera. Of course it'd be the same on the iPhone, using the iPhone's camera. Or I can go get one from my various Creative Cloud sources. I can also grab one using Creative Sync from the uh, libraries in Creative Cloud, or even Facebook and Dropbox. For this first photo, for the first layer, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the Creative Cloud icon, because in the Creative Cloud icon, I can drop down the menu, see all the various sources, and where I really wanna get this photo from is from my Lightroom collections. So I've got various collections synced to Lightroom, including one called Photoshop Mix. So let's go ahead and go there. And on the left-hand side of that collection is the tree. You might be saying, well, you know, that's a great picture of a tree. Did you take that? And no, actually I didn't take it. I created it in Photoshop on the desktop using the tree filter, basically rendering a tree using all the different parameters to create a custom tree. So that's where it originally came from. I actually built it in Photoshop. Now that it's here, it basically created a canvas that was the size of that image, and I'm gonna use two fingers to pinch to uh, zoom that up a little bit. Because I'm more interested in the leaves than I am the actual branches in the tree itself. All right, great, now I've got this size the way I want, and you'll notice on the right-hand side we see our layers. It's on the bottom layer, and it's got a layer above it with a plus sign, and you know what that means. It means I can add a new layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer, I'm going to go to my Creative Cloud again, go to Photos again, and this time we'll bring in our model list. All right, so we'll go ahead and open it up, and as you can see, it added it as a new layer. It's not quite tall enough, but more importantly, on the right-hand side, for the first time in Photoshop Mix, I can go beyond two layers. You see the plus signs there again? I can add another layer, and another layer, and another layer. And you might, the uh, first question comes to you, how many layers can I have? It really depends on your device. I'm not gonna give you a number on purpose because if I give you a number and you've got an older device that can't handle it, then you're gonna be, oh, I can't get that many layers. So it's based on your device's capabilities, RAM, memory, all of that. So with that said, you can have multiple layers. We're gonna have a few here. All right, so uh, now, I'm not worried about it not being tall enough, but I do wanna move it down a little bit so that it at least goes to the bottom. Okay, great. Now, the reason I don't care that it's tall enough is because I'm gonna cut her out of that background anyway. So I don't really need to see the gray at the very top. Now, of course, you can use a stylus, you can use your finger, but I'm gonna go ahead and tap the cutout button here. And once I go to cutout, uh, using my stylus, I'm gonna go ahead and just start selecting what I wanna keep. I wanna keep her, not the background. So when I make the selection, it will start painting that in. There we go, doing a good job here. Now, hair is one of the hardest things to select. And this, this image is no different and hair is still hard even in Photoshop Mix 2.0. But um, I don't have to really worry about the hair being perfect in this case <clears throat> because uh, I'm, not gonna I'm not worried about the hair and you'll see in a moment. So let's, uh, I'm gonna subtract some of that area that I got by mistake there and some of this that I got by mistake. So just switching to subtract button at the bottom there. And of course you can always zoom in. You can do a better job. 
I'm just kind of doing it quick, down and dirty, so that I can uh, show you the compositing feature. But if you really want to clean that up, zoom in and clean it up and do a better job than what I'm doing here today. So let's just cut some of that out there. There we go. Good. And that is good enough for our composite. So it's showing me what I've cut. Of course, you can go in. You can adjust the feathering if you need it to, which I'm not going to feather it at all. You can adjust the uh, edges. You can have them smoothing, short edges, medium, so forth and so on along the edge. So I'm going to uh, just say that it's, I'm going to leave it on the default. And I'm going to go ahead and just tap the check mark at the bottom, which is the OK button. So now that I've done that, it already looks fairly decent on that uh, tree background. You can kind of see a little bit of the gray, but that's okay. I don't really care about that. And now you're about to see why. New in Photoshop Mix 2.0, you can take the mask that it just created for you. In other words, it didn't really delete that gray background. It kind of masked it out in the background. So, or under the hood, I should say. So what I want to do is I want to use that cutout mask on the tree but I don't want to have to cut it out manually again. So all I have to do now, new in 2.0, is drag this layer down on top of the layer below, and it will give me an option. Do you want to merge them together? Do you want to like flatten it? No, I don't want to do that. I want to copy the mask onto that layer. So once I do the copy, there it is. You don't see the tree anymore because it's completely behind her and silhouetted and cut out. So how, how can we, well, why'd you do that? If you, you know, what's the point of that? Well, now I can introduce you to one of the most exciting new features of Photoshop Mix. I would say number one is multiple layers beyond two. And number two is blending modes. So keep in mind, I've got the model layer, Liz, I got her selected. And I'm gonna go to the new blend option where I now have nine of the most popular Photoshop blending modes ready to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tap screen and now you can see why I didn't really have to be that careful cutting this out because we're just going to screen it onto the leaves. Now also, because uh, it kind of threw me at first, I was looking for opacity. Opacity also got moved to the blending mode option. So if I did need to adjust the opacity of that layer, I could do that here now. So blend is blending modes and opacity. Uh, you can get do either one or both. All right, so now that I've got it kind of nicely blended in, Looks kind of cool. Well, it doesn't really look cool on no background or a blank background. So I want to go ahead and get a new background using multiple layers. I can go ahead and add a third layer now. So when I go ahead and look for my next layer, it's going to say, again, where do you want to get this from? Last two images I got from Lightroom. This next one I'm going to go ahead and get from the library panel. Um, now, the library what are libraries well in creative cloud you've got the ability in all of your desktop applications photoshop illustrator indesign um, uh, so forth and so on you got the ability to add images and effects and things to the library panel and it's a library you can have multiple libraries and those libraries can sync across all your different applications using creative sync and even be available in your mobile apps so here i am in my adobe stock um, library where I've downloaded some stock images and there's one that's perfect for the background. So it's called Road on Road in Dark Forest. If you want to look for that image on Adobe Stock. So Road in Dark Forest, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Now, of course, that's going to uh, sync down the high res version. Uh, and then it's going to add it to a layer here in Photoshop Mix. So let's give it a second to do that. And there it is. So it added it to a layer again, put it on top and look, there's another plus sign. I keep adding more layers. Now I notice it again, it's a little too short. This one I do want to be tall enough to be the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and pinch and zoom to kind of scale it up a little bit, just a hair. And now it's big enough. So it fills the frame, but of course it's on top of everything else. And we don't want that. So I'm going to just hold down that layer and drag it down to the bottom. So we'll move it down to the bottom layer and oh no, doesn't look as good as I envisioned. It doesn't look as good as I envisioned because now that I think about it, when I cut the, the or you know, cut did the cutout on the model and then did, you know, just duplicated that mask down to the tree, well that tree was on a white background. It wasn't cut out. 
So I'm starting to see the white from the tree in between the leaves and branches. Well, we remember we have blending modes. So let's go ahead and go to that tree layer. And on the tree layer, what I'm gonna do is switch to blend. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say darken. When I choose darken, darken is a great blending mode. I use it all the time because it says anything not darker than this, make it go away. So the white is not darker than the background, so all the white just faded away. So the darken um, blending mode made this work out perfectly. Now you're probably asking, what can you do with it if you're finished? Well, if I'm finished, one of the things I can do with it, keep in mind, um, Photoshop Mix has a round, round tripping workflow between the other mobile apps. So one of the things I can do is send it, save it to Lightroom. Remember, we started in Lightroom with the first two images, and typically on a desktop, you would do that workflow. You would go ahead and open up something in Photoshop, do some correction to it, and save it back to Lightroom. Now I have the same ability, but I can go beyond that. If I don't quite like, see a little bit of gray there, I don't quite want to uh, uh, have that mask looking the way it looks, maybe I want to keep working on it some more, I can go ahead and uh, send it to Photoshop. So when I say send to Photoshop, what Photoshop Mix is doing right now is it's building a PSD file with all the layers intact and it will sync it up to Creative Cloud once it's finished building it. And of course, Creative Cloud will sync it back down to my desktop. So it's done with its part. And I can already see on my desktop in the upper right hand corner, the little Creative Cloud logo syncing the file back down. While we're waiting for that, one more thing I could do if I do like it the way it is, I can of course um, publish it to Behance, send it, or publish it on Facebook, or and post it to Instagram, and even use the standard iOS share sheet to share it anywhere else. So you got all of those capabilities built right into Photoshop Mix. All right, so great, it's synced to uh, Photoshop on my desktop. Let's give it a second to open. And here it comes, opening in Photoshop, and voila, there's my layered file with all the masks, everything ready to go. So again, if I wanna keep working on the mask of the cutout now, here on my desktop with my professional tools, I can just go ahead and just keep working. So here we are. I could go in and say, you know what? I would really like to um, mask that a little bit more, so switch to my brush tool, and let's get a regular brush here and uh, switch our mask color and now i can just go ahead and continue masking that the way i want let's increase the pressure there there we go so i can really clean this up and continue working on it here in photoshop with my professional tools and because i'm working on layers i don't have to worry about damaging my background and there we go just a couple quick minor touch-ups and i'm happy with it as is. So that's the workflow between Photoshop Mix on the mobile, des mobile uh, workflow to desktop, back and forth, or mobile to mobile in the case of Lightroom. With that, take care. Hope you learned something. Go download the new Photoshop Mix 2.0 for iPhone and iPad today, and we'll catch you on the next one.